Hi, and welcome to another Weka tutorial. This tutorial and the next tutorial, these two tutorials are going to be very interesting because in these two tutorials I'm going to talk about how you can classify documents. So these tutorials are important because uh, you know that classification of documents are, is going to be a very prominent field in machine learning and data mining. So Weka has some facilities that you can use to easily classify uh, various types of documents. So in this tutorial, I'm going to first show you what filter you can use for uh, doing document classification. And the next tutorial, in, in the next tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how exactly you can uh, classify various documents. So to start with, uh, we're going to Weka Explorer and we are going to open a file I have already created this file and I'm going to show you this file after opening this so I open that file right so what's in that file if I go to uh, that particular file and I can um, sh then I'm showing you here that the relation name is train and there are just two attributes the first one is called document of type string and the second one is the attribute called class uh, it's either yes or no these are the two binary classes that we're going to assign these documents so here you can see that we are having uh, we are having something in in uh, quotation marks uh, the first one is the price of crude oil has increased significantly now for example uh, this is just one single sentence but you can have multiple numbers of sentences within within uh, the quote marks there so this is a, a, actually your text document the, uh, the amount of text you have in your document you can put all of them uh, into into these into these two quote marks and they will represent the entire text of your document but for the simplicity's sake of this tutorial I'm just assuming that my document has just one single sentence that is called the price of crude oil has increased significantly and the class of the document is yes so what's, what's, what are these yes and no about uh, these two classes are representing whether uh, the texts in my document are actually uh, pointing out that the document is talking about crude oils so here you can see for the price of the crude oil has increased significantly that if this is a text uh, present in my document then it's, it's really talking about crude oils on the other hand uh, for the second document again i'm telling you it can, the second document can have hundreds and thousands of sentences and they all can be put uh, in, in these two quote marks there is nothing problem here but for simplicity's sake i just I, I just assume that my document is having just one sentence that is demand for crude oil outstrips supply so this document the text in this document is also um, uh, talking about crude oil so that's classified as positive or yes whereas my third document has a sentence called some people do not like the flavor of olive oil so this is not actual this the text in this document is not actually talking about the crude oils or petroleum it's actually talking about the cooking oil which is olive oil so uh, this document is classified as no as uh, the text in the document uh, is not uh, actually conveying the information that the document is uh, talking about crude oil that's not true it's uh, actually talking about cooking oil so in this way I have uh, six examples in my train file and uh, this is the file that I've just uh, uploaded to um, that, that I just uh, loaded in my Weka Explorer so we are now going back to Weka Explorer here we have a very nice filter it's called uh, it's it's kind of unsupervised filter so you can you can go to filter unsupervised then it's an attribute filter uh, you go down and you can see that we have uh, a filter called string to word vector so if we choose that what exactly it is doing is we have the strings there for example, uh, in our train file, we have 
all these strings so this is just one sentence you can have thousands and millions of uh, sentences within quote marks if your document really has that volume of text so what string to uh, word vector is doing here is actually uh, it is converting all those string elements present in my train file here is the relation name and in the six instances you know that we had six documents there with two attributes uh, class, uh, two attributes one is document and the other one is class so all of those strings contain words right now string to word vector if you do not uh, if you do not uh, modify any of these arguments here just you're just using the default arguments then what string to word vector does is it is actually creating a vector of words that are all contained in those six strings so you know that there are several mechanisms you can use a java code you can use a python code to uh, generate a word vector from a group of strings but for Weka, it's already written there, so you don't have to uh, wor you don't have to be worried how are you going how you are going to uh, produce a word vector from strings because uh, you know that term frequency, inverse document frequency, these are very vital information or attributes required for various uh, uh, machine learning and data mining jobs. So. You don't have to be worried about that. Weka will do it for you. So if we choose the string to word vector and keep the default settings there and click on apply, you can see that it's interesting to see that our class attribute is now situated as our number one attribute. Where in the in the in the main file, if we go back here in the train file, you can see that our class attribute was the last attribute. But after, after applying that filter, that unsupervised filter, my, our uh, class attribute is now situated or positioned at the first as the first attribute of our attribute list. And previously, we just had two attributes here, the document and class attributes. But now we are having 35 attributes. What does it mean? It means that as you apply the string to word vector filter on the entire training file, training R file, it's then it then uh, creates a vector of words found from all the strings present in your R file. So you can see that we are having crude, demand, the, and again a small, uh, uh, it's not capitalized, the C is not capitalized, crude, for, has in increased and so on so these are all the 34 35 minus 1 so we have one class attribute 34 words that are uniquely present there in your r file all of those six strings that you had in your train.r file so if you click on any one of those attributes you can see that the minimum value is zero the maximum is one you have the mean and standard division and so on so you can have information for these attributes for all of these attributes okay so this is interesting because just by applying an unsupervised filter what you have done is you have broken down your strings into word vectors and word vectors are really important so now we cannot if we want to develop a model or build a model using any classification algorithm then um, uh, this class attribute needs to go to the end of your attribute list so how are you going to do that uh, i showed it in one my one of my tutorials how to take the class attribute to the end so this is how it is done you click on edit and you can see that you have you have the class uh, the nominal type of attribute called class situated at the very beginning of your train.r file now after applying the filter so you can right click on that class attribute and you can select attribute as class so now it goes to the end of your attribute list so you can see that uh, we are having some blue and red uh, going on here uh, to denote the yes and no portions and on the class attribute you can see that we had three yeses and three noes okay so in this way you are you have just taken the class attribute from the beginning of your attribute list to the end of your attribute list now using these word vector 
of presentation of your train.r file, you can always generate uh, m generate a model using different kinds of algorithms. This is, uh, the uh, procedure is the same. So you go to classify tab. You are, for example, choosing a tree types tree type algorithm called J48. And we're not going to do any cross validation here because we're just we're just having a very few uh, amount of training data. That's six. So we click on use training set and we click on start. So this is the model uh, th that are created with J48 using uh, the word vector representation of your train.r file. Okay, so if you want to apply this model to any other uh, test set, then what you can do is you can uh, you can select right click on on the model that in the result set, uh, result list, and you can set the model. Uh, at any place, for example, we are going to save it as word vector uh, model. Okay, and we click on save. So in this way, you just saved uh, your train dot r file, which is actually presenting the document texts, the texts in the document you are having, and the class of those documents, whether they're talking about crude oil or not you have just saved a model uh, of these train dot uh, model of a classifier of on these uh, train dot r file but you didn't use actually the string attribute of the document attribute here what you have to just done is you have created a word vector from all the strings present in your r file i hope that helps and i'll be back with more document classification uh, demonstration in the next video. Thank you very much.